first annual High Impact Tutoring Conference. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Susanna Loeb. I direct the Annenberg Institute here at Brown. I'm a professor. And with Kathy Bentheim, who is back in the corner there, we started in this National Student uh, Support Accelerator uh, with the help of many of you in the room and just like a terrific advisory board. And we're so excited to have you here today. So welcome to Brown. Each moment in a child's life is an opportunity. And I think what we've realized over the last two years, or what we saw over the last two years, is that we have a collective opportunity to do something very different. We watched institutions of education all across this country fail students and families during the pandemic. We watched systems that were never built to be nimble or to be flexible not be able to be nimble and flexible and meet students and families where they were. We watched a nonprofit sector, an ecosystem of folks who have been supporting our young people, many of you in the room, stand up and rise up and actually meet the moment. And for me, this is a tremendous opportunity to rethink how we do some things. We have a collective opportunity with more money being uh, passed through schools than perhaps ever before, with people who are willing to think differently and do things differently. And this moment is our moment. This is an opportunity for us to totally redefine how we do school. And part of how redefining how we do school includes ensuring that our young people have an individualized approach where they get the help that they, each one of them, needs with a caring person. There's specific things that are important that I think are necessary for effective implementation and at the same time are flexible enough for districts to modify the model to meet their needs of the local context. Making it sure it's part of the school day. It's so much power when tutoring is just embedded into the regular ecosystem for how kids are learning. Making sure those pairings are consistent. Right? Kids don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Those relationships are central for unlocking that student potential. We're a convener and we bring together partner districts, um, higher ed, faith-based communities. We pretty much bring together everyone to talk about the problem of learning disruption, the promise of high impact tutoring and help do all the necessary like troubleshooting and sense making to figure out, help districts figure out a path forward, but then also to help everybody else figure out what role they can play in that path forward. And we started looking at what are these standards for tutoring, the NSSA, the TQIA standards, and how can we revolve our bid around these standards? Everyone here has expertise as educators in what outcomes they want to design. But I think as we move quickly with this urgency of the moment, it's also important to not move uh, past the communities we serve. Um, the author Laura Escobar once said, a person who acquires information requires a power. Measurement is an act of power. It's also quite honestly a lot our world an act of privilege. So I think that, um, so I just, I just name it because we're all here for the right reasons, but the communities we serve are also there for those reasons. And I think we just have to be careful as we think about measurement and the programming, engaging with them on not only would they care, but how would they measure success? And it's not that what we would measure is not what they want to measure, but we don't know if we don't ask. And if we're not careful, the communities many of which we serve have seen measurements so weaponized against them in the past that if we are not explicit in asking them, what do you care about? What would you want to measure? And creating that social contract, it puts us at real risk. as teacher candidates are very excited about the opportunity, especially post-pandemic. So many of our clinical experiences over the last two years were only online or were like watching videos or writing reflective papers. They weren't interacting with kids in a face-to-face -face setting or also face-to-face. -face. And so just that opportunity to learn how to 
how to work with students face to face again is such a gift to be able to give back to teacher ed students. I'm just incredibly inspired to be in this room with everybody. I know a couple of years ago when the pandemic started and people were trying to figure out what solutions should we implement to help students catch up, uh, as was mentioned, you know, tutoring was this inkling of an idea and to see this entire room here today, the national conversation that's been focused on tutoring, all of the dollars that have been shifted towards tutoring, I think is just a huge testament to all of the work that this entire group has put together that we really need to reimagine. I think someone phrased it that way, schools can be more innovative when we think about what we're trying to accomplish with schools. I like what Aaron said, that the school system is not, COVID did not um, break the school system. The school system by and large was not working before COVID for a lot of our students. And COVID presented an opportunity for us to try new and innovative strategies. And I, I don't think we uh, managed that very well as a school system, but as a country. So. Here we are with resources to try something new, to, to incorporate high impact tutoring, but I really think we should think about how can we completely reimagine what schools are and, and how they work for our students. Most of our students are on TikTok, they have their own YouTube channels, you know, it's very individualized in terms of their life, and schools still seem to be very like one size fits all. So how do we customize that is a question that I have. The reason high impact tutoring is working and they, um, we see such value in it is because at the heart of it, it's about meeting students where they are and teaching with love. And when we have those two parts in there, that's what makes the difference in the lives of those students, as we heard right from the opening comments with AJ, um, that that is what is at the heart of high impact tutoring. And that no matter what decisions are made surrounding the implementation of it, as long as those two things are still there, then this will be successful. But this is proof in the pudding that high impact tutoring changes lives and we together are going to work to ensure that that happens for every young person in America.